A lot of the pro riders are doing it, but does that mean you should be adding the preload pop to your jumping routine? When scrolling for Instagram, you'll quickly notice that a lot of the biggest jumps and loops all have this funny little hop just before the takeoff. But how does this little pop aid you to boost higher? To answer that question, we have to look at some videos and analyze every single move. In theory, the preload pop is actually quite simple. You come riding in on a crosswind course and you do a little hop off the water. Upon landing, you can really dig your heels in and carve hard towards the wind. This little pop aids you to carve harder, but why? In order to see that, we need to look from a different angle. Looking at it from the side, you'll notice that I don't carve upwind as I pop off the water with the preload pop. Because of that, the kite pulls me slightly downwind and upon landing, I can use the kinetic energy of my body coming down to carve harder towards the wind. This in return can add height and power to your jump. For every action, there is a reaction and this reaction will be felt in the kite. Did you know, for instance, that the flying speed of the kite is directly related to the amount of force that you put on your lines? Take carving towards the wind, for example. When I carve towards the wind, I exert more force on the lines and therefore my kite speeds up towards the edge of the wind window. When I bear away from the wind, I put less force on the lines, reducing the flying speed of the kite and it will sit further back into the wind window. The flying speed of the kite is also related to the amount of power that the kite generates. The higher the flying speed of the kite, the more power the kite will generate. Therefore, it's in our best interest that at the moment that we leave the water, the kite has the maximum flying speed, so it generates the most amount of power. This is exactly what I try to achieve with the preload pop. By popping off the water, I decrease the force on the lines and this makes the kite sink back a tiny bit in the wind window. This allows the kite to shoot forward even further and build up more speed as I land and carve hard towards the wind. So let's sum up the advantages of the preload pop. We can increase our riding speed because water is like friction and the moment that you pop off the water, the kite can accelerate you. Next to that, we can carve harder due to the kinetic energy that we bring from the pop and we can generate more power and lift because the kite will accelerate from deeper within the wind window. So why doesn't everybody do it all the time? And the answer to that is quite simple. This preload pop needs to be perfectly executed in order to give you that little bit of extra height. If you mess up one thing, you'll lose all that you work for and jump a lot lower. And that brings us to the next question. When should you be doing a preload pop? You'll notice the biggest advantages on flat water with medium to high winds when trying big jumps and loops. In choppy conditions it can help you to position your carve in the valley of the chop and use a small wave as a kicker. Next to that I think that only the intermediate to advanced riders will benefit from this technique. The preload pop makes less or no sense when you're overpowered as this technique will give you more power and it will be hard to control your carve. I also can't recommend it when you have a nice kicker wave or jump in very low winds as the kite will lose too much power. Obviously, you shouldn't do it before any sliding tricks like the dark slide and they're often not needed for back or front rolls. Timing is key when doing the preload pop and that's what we're going to look at next. Ride in under a crosswind course with speed and power. Ollie off the water by kicking your back foot and keep your bar in the same position. Steer the kite up towards 12 as you're about to land back on the water and carve hard towards the wind. As your kite is about to hit 12, you pop off the water by pulling your bar down. When we look at the overview, you can see that I slowly steer my kite up towards 11 before I do the preload pop. I give a big steering input towards 12 when I've passed the apex of my pop and prepare to carve hard towards the wind. During my carve I stop steering the kite and pop off the water when it reached 12. On this particular jump I actually popped off the water a short moment too late. When replayed in slow motion the timing doesn't seem that tricky, but when we speed it up to real time it becomes clear why it's so hard to get the timing right. Let's have a look at some of the key points and the first one is all about timing. You want to start off by directing your kite towards 11, after which you pop off the water 
and then give a strong steering input towards 12. Upon landing, you carve hard and pop off the water for maximum height. It's very important that you keep tension on your steering lines. As soon as you let that bar out, you're going to dump all that power that you worked so hard for. And I still think that the carve is one of the main key points to jump high. So really focus on that carve and don't lose too much attention in the pop. And lastly, it's very important that you ride in with speed. Everything about the preload pop is built around speed. So if you're not riding in with speed, then it's not gonna make any sense. And now for the golden question, should you try the preload pop or rather just stick with a classic carve towards the wind? In my opinion, 90% of the riders out there should not bother trying to do a preload pop. The jumping sequence alone is already hard enough and adding a preload pop in front of that just makes it overly complicated. Rather focus on riding into your jump with speed, not losing your edge and carving hard towards the wind. You'll see much bigger height gains from that than adding a preload pop in front. Of course, if you're having a near perfect jump 90% of the time, you can start considering adding the preload pop for that little bit of extra height gain. And with that anti-climax, we're actually getting to the end of this video. I hope you still enjoyed it and learned something. If so, give me the thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. And obviously leave a comment if you have any questions or disagree. These are my views and yours might differ. So I'm curious to hear what you think. See you on the next one.